So I'll start with the DJ202. It's a fully featured intro controller and has basically all the features that you might find on a, on a pro level controller, but packed into a small compact size. So we've got the full performance pads, which are great. So you've got you know, hot cues, loops, sequencer, sampler, you've got effects control, and you've also got the sequencer. Now it comes free with Serato DJ intro, but it also can be upgraded to Serato DJ uh, either by the subscription or you can buy it outright. And I actually think we have a few special offers in certain retailers around the world where they actually are bundling the full version of Serato DJ with the 202. So go out there, if you get in early, you might be able to get Serato DJ with it at the store. So let's look at the performance pads. It's kind of the, uh, the classic stuff that you find with Serato DJ. So we've got hot cues, and the secondary layer is the cue loop. We've got loops, we've got rolls, we've got sequencer, which we'll come back to in a minute because that's the special stuff, sampler, and then the slicer mode as the secondary sampler mode. At the top here, we've got effects, and the effects are quite interesting on this because there's three buttons all chained to one knob, which is actually different to how a lot of the pro controllers work but it lets you actually have a bit of fun with chaining effects. So, you know, I can actually hit. I can add three effects all together. Let me just open up the effects panel so you can see. So I can actually turn on all three effects and control them with one knob, which is pretty fun. You've got filters, of course, in the middle, and your EQs. You've got the uh, your master level, the uh, headphone mixing controls. Don't have headphones on, don't need headphones today. And the sample level. So the sample level controls the TR8 sounds, which are, which are built in, which I'll talk about in a minute, as, as well as the Serato sample player. So let's talk about the special stuff on this, and that is the sequencer and the uh, TR8 sounds that are actually built in. Not as obvious as on the DJ 808 and the DJ 505, but they are actually under the hood here. So let me just stop the music and I'll show you how it works. So what you do is you go over to the sequencer mode and you've got two layers. You've got the TR8 sounds, which are actually built into the pads, and you've got the ability to sequence the sample player in Serato DJ. So if you hold shift and you've got these, you can see that parameter lights up, that changes between the TR8 sounds and the sample player. So you can hear I've got the TR8 sounds that are built in there, and you've got your volume knob in the middle. So I've got kick, snare, hi-hat, open hat, tom, clap, rim shot, and then the, uh, the cowbell, of course. So you can play those um, and then sequence them up to songs on, on the, um, that you're playing on deck, or you can actually also then layer up with the Serato DJ sample player. And to do that, you go to hold shift, parameter button, and you've got the, all the, um, the samples that I've got inside Strata DJ. So what I'll do is I'll start off by just actually sequencing in a simple pattern. I'm gonna go back to the TR8 sounds, find the hi-hat, and I'm gonna sequence it in. So I go to shift, I find the sound I want, and select it. Now, I can actually just paint it in like that, and you'll see the sequence run across the pads. Now, you don't have to paint in, you can also play it in. So, if I hit sequencer again, you can see it's flashing. Now I can actually just finger drum in the stuff I want. So, at the moment, I've got the TR8 level, uh, the TR8 layer selected, so I can add, say, cowbell. You can see it just actually just sequences in as I play it. I'm going to go over to the, um, the Serato DJ sample sounds now and then play those in over the top. If I want to see how those are actually laid out in the sequencer, hit it again and you can see it run through. So let's find the... I don't really like the hay that I put in there, so I'm going to select that by holding shift and then pad eight. And you can see there on the pads, that's actually where it's running in the sequence. I'm going to turn it off. And now I've got a sequence and I can sync it up to anything that I'm playing on, on, the, uh, on the turntables. So you've got the sync button in the middle to match it up and then sync button on the deck.
And that's just a really quick overview of the sequencer on the 202. Now I'll show you a bit more about how the sequencer on the 505 works in a minute, because it's a little bit more, um, I guess, flexible, and you can do a few more things with it, because it's got the dedicated strip across the top. Now I think that's a, probably a pretty good summary of the, the 202. Like I said, it's got the classic performance pads that you'll find, hot cues, loops, sequencer sampler. It's got dedicated cue and play buttons, which you don't find on every intro controller. Parameter buttons, it actually has three and four decks, so you can switch layers if you need to. So you can actually run four, yeah, you run it as a four deck controller. It's two channel, but four decks. The effects control at the top with three buttons and one knob, which is nice for chaining. Filters, EQs, uh, the master level, the headphone cues, and the sample level in the middle. Library scroll, it's pretty much got everything you need uh, for a controller. And it's really well priced, it's simple, it's small, you can just about throw it in a backpack. And the TR8 sounds, it's actually just all, all together just a great controller.